Hello everyone, I'm back again with another video and in the last video I talked about how the identity of Somalis include being black in a system of white and Arab supremacy because under those systems one is perceived as being black despite some not taking such ownership. This video is about the East African slave trade as it pertains to Somalis. My point in talking about this is to also acknowledge the brutality and wrongdoings of slavery by Arabs and not just the system of slavery itself because there are aspects of history where slavery was not a caste system and their freedom could be obtained and you are treated with respect. However, with the knowledge we do have about Sunni Arab Muslims, we know that they acted savagely and used Islam, more specifically Hadith, to justify their brutal treatment of Africans. The East African slave trade was already a thousand years old before the transatlantic slave trade began. Many Somali people, perhaps, are unaware that Somalis were also victims of the East African slave trade by Arabs, being subjugated to enslavement, and I know when hearing that, many Somali people may be confused. However, I will explain how Somali people, too, were victims of being enslaved by Arabs. So usually, when Somali people hear about the East African slave trade, they're like, we weren't slaves, Bantus were slaves, and I'm like, let's take it back a little. Firstly, when it comes to labels or putting people into racial categories, one must realize the impact of terminology when it comes to how outsiders and foreign explorers called other races of people in Africa. At one point, some other people were even included in the term Moors by Europeans, a term that was usually held for ethnic groups of West Africa. In The Politics of Dress in Somali Culture by Marie Aku, she talks about the politics and history of Somalia along with the implications of Indian and Arab influence on Somali dress as well as the intermarriages that occurred. She includes a section from a Portuguese explorer where he calls East African Moors. Whenever you read documents about the Arab slave trade, the term that is often used to describe the origin of slaves are simply East African or Zanj, with the location being the Swahili coast. Even today, if one looks at a map of where Somalia, the nation state is, and then compare that to the areas where Somalis reside in East Africa, Somalis spill well beyond the physical boundaries of the nation state of Somalia. Not long ago, the borders of Somalia today were much larger, but due to civil war and everything else, other countries claimed what was Somalia's territory. However, historically, Somalia has never had its own nation state where Somalis had a specific territory belonging only to Somalis until relatively recently, and that's because Somalis are typically nomadic, which means Somalis did not just reside in the nation state that exists today. I say all this to explain that Somali people are not just where the nation state of Somalia exists today. The reason why it's important to understand what Somalia or Somalis were called when talking about the East African slave trade is because the locations and the terms used by the people that were doing the enslaving included people from what today is known as the nation state of Somalia. So here's what I mean if that's unclear or hard to understand. If Somalis were known as being Habisha, which in many literature from Arabs, Somalis were included in that term pre-nation state of Somalia, then that would mean that they were referring to even Somalis when saying Habisha in literature. Therefore, when Arabs enslaved East Africans, in which they called East African Zanj, they were also including Somalis. In the earliest Arabic references, black Africans are either called Habishi or Sudan, the former designating the Ethiopians and their immediate neighbors in the Horn of Africa, according to Bernard Lewis in Race and Color in Islam. Now going back to how Somalis always talk about Bantus being slaves as opposed to Somalis, note that the majority of scholars say Bantus did not get to East Africa until the 1900s. And again, the East African slave trade was around for a thousand years before the transatlantic slave trade, which started during the 16th century. So the East African slave trade was already in existence before Bantus were used. The usage of using Somalis as slaves slowed down in the 13th century when the majority of Somalis accepted Islam, according to Ibn Said al maghrabi the implication of the statement means that previously, before the majority of Somalis embraced Islam, that they were used as slaves. <laughs> 
It's not a massive scholarship on the subject of the intricacies of the Arab slave trade in East Africa because they, the Arabs, did not heavily document their doings, whereas when Europeans went to West Africa, they detailed languages, tribes, locations, lineages, etc., etc., of captured Africans. When it comes to Somali specifically, the word Somali was not even recorded in writing until the mid-1400s by an Ethiopian emperor. Therefore, Somalis were categorized as outsiders as a term that was used to generalize East Africans. Even in Islamic texts and hadiths, the term Somali is never specifically used, only Habisha, Nubia, Egypt, and so forth. And this is important to note because we know from Islamic history that Arabs had contact with East Africa, especially Ethiopia, yet there is no mention of the word Somali. The word Barber was used in a few hadiths, however, all of the hadiths with the mention of the term Berber are very racist and condescending. It is also unclear whether or not those hadiths were speaking of the Berbers in North Africa or East Africa. However, Somalia was known in some literature as the land of Berbers. Here is what scholar of Islamic archaeology Timothy Power has said. The African slaves exported from Zela included both broadly Ethiopian people brought down to the coast from the interior and Berbers from modern Somalia. This is from the book The Red Sea from Byzantium to Caliphate, 500 to 1000 AD. Al-Makdisi, an Arab geographer born in the 900s, observes that the slaves exported to Aden, which is Yemen, consist of Barbar, and these are the worst of slaves. I figured Somali people would want me to use a Somali source too, although we can all stand a dose of Orientalism to neutralize our history. However, here's a Somali source named Sharif Adaris, and the book that he made was published in 1955 in Mogadishu, and he talks about the history of Somalia, and everything that he says is from geographers who traveled to the Horn of Africa. So the reason why I've been using the sources that I've been using is because they're the sources that even Somali historians use. I will also put another Somali source in the description box below. So yes, of course, all people throughout history eventually resisted colonization and enslavement. There was even a rebellion called the Zanj Rebellion, which happened in Iraq and Basra. Fast forwarding to the 1900s, Somalis did not initially resist colonization or rule. And here are some pictures of Somalis catering to white people and being put in zoos for white people to enjoy for their amusement as if Somali people are animals to them. So when we think about the East African slave trade, we have to realize that Somalis too were subjected to discrimination, enslavement, and racist attitudes by Arabs. When we look at Somalia today, I think the effects of colonization, although it was heavily resisted during the 20th century by Said Muhammad Abdullah Hassan, aka the Mad Mullah, contributes to some of the problems that Somalia has had over the last few decades. I really hope that this video is informative and makes Somalis understand that under the system of white and Arab supremacy, we're all black, and I hope that Somalis partake in the scholarship of understanding how outsiders viewed Somalia, because real historians neutralize their history with what outsiders have said. The rose-painted narratives that our proud ancestors painted contain obvious biases, therefore, it's important to look at more than one perspective, and that's a general rule when it comes to academia. The main takeaway from this video is that Somalis were used as slaves before converting to Islam and even on some levels after converting to Islam. However, the amounts that were used were smaller after the majority of Somalis converted in the 13th century. Keep in mind that the population of Somalis were a lot smaller than today because over time we have exponential growth. Therefore, there are a lot more Somalis today than there were centuries ago. This means back then the impact of taking even a couple hundred of slaves was significant to the population that existed. Later on in the 1900s, Arabs would start to use Bantus that were import imported from other African countries, which is one reason why Somalis today have amnesia about being a part of the East African slave trade. So with that being said, as always, comment, like, and subscribe, and thank you for watching.